perfectly timely topic. As I got out of my truck in the parking lot, I saw a big mound. And I called the city uh, parks and rec and said, hey, I know this is late notice, but if y'all want to come in, we're talking about fire rent. Did you want to come in? Yeah. Um, my name is Jennifer Davidson, and I'm the county coordinator here in Russell County for Alabama Cooperative Extension. We're the outreach of uh, Auburn University and Alabama a and um, We do programs uh, in lots of different program areas. Ag and Natural Resources is one of them, and this fire rent kind of falls under that, but we also do 4-H youth development. Um, some of you might not know that we still have a pretty strong 4-H program. We see all the 4th and 5th graders in Russell County, and then we have county competitions. Um, in fact, we've got uh, so many folks signed up for camp. Yesterday, I had a, um, we had some dilemmas. We had more people than we had spots for for 4-H summer camp. So, um, so uh, we also do other programs in the area of what I used to call home economics growing up, um, which is like finance. Um, and in fact, next month's program here for our lunch and learn is preparing your child for kindergarten. So if y'all have any folks that are two and three and four years old. Um, please feel free to come back. I know some of y'all might not be your thing. <laughs> um, but uh, we have this program every second Tuesday of the month here at the library. We're so thankful for them to, to let us um, partner with them on this project. Um, also wanted to mention to y'all that we are the link to the labs at Auburn. So any of your pathology samples, nematology samples, any samples that have forage, um, pond samples, water samples, or soil samples, um, those run through our office. So if you need that done, uh, grab me on the way out or something, we can talk about that. Um, without, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Chip East, and he's going to talk to you all about fire ants today. How are y'all doing? Right. We got a lot of ground to cover. Whatever we don't get to, we, we work every day of the year. You don't have to wait till we come back. Just email, call whatever Jennifer. My information's online at the Russell County, on the Russell County Extension website as well. But ask her and we'll be glad to answer whatever we, we don't get to today. There's a lot of mounds per acre. 40 or 50, 60, 70. I was at a Christmas tree farm one time, had 80 mounds to the acre, and we was treating out there. You know, people got to come out there and cut trees. You think, well, this wintertime, well, depends on what day in the wintertime. They can be active even in the wintertime. But anyway, we were working out there, and he said, well, do you reckon when you, what you're going to do is going to help? I said, son, I don't know how we could make it worse <laughs> because you just, I could walk across the field and if I wanted to step on the mounds, I wouldn't have to hit the ground. I could stay on the mound. So there are a lot. The other thing is there's a lot we don't see. If you see a mound there today and it was not there yesterday, it did not come in last night. It's been there for a month. You just didn't see it. Now, how do you treat and get that colony when it hasn't built a mound yet? You follow me? That's what we're going to talk about today because that's the ultimate goal, you see. Anyway, there's a lot we could say. I'm not going to read all that. There's, we, we got too much to talk about. Where did they come from? Somebody asked a while ago. Argentina. They, we call them imported fire ants. They just call them fire ants there. You see what I mean? How did they get? Guess where they came when they left Argentina? Oh. It was not Mexico. Did anybody say anything else? They came to Mo <laughs> they came to Mobile, Alabama, to the bay, and that's where they started back in the 30s. And cold is kind of their limiting thing. They're they're getting out west. They they, they need some moisture in the soil, so they don't like the dry dry ground and that sort of thing. So it depends. A lot of people from Tennessee, you know, they're they're in Tennessee. But you can have a cold, they may get to, but when you have a cold, cold year, they're, 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 they're killed out, but they're coming back and all. But obviously, they're all over Alabama, so that's what we're concerned with. I work a lot with athletic turf and everything, too, and I know of a, a high school football game got called off. Now, just imagine grandmas and granddaddies drove 100 miles to see the grand young and play. You done bought your ticket. You got your hot dog. You're, you're ready. And then the referees come out there and say, we ain't going to play game today. And that has happened before. Not at Auburn, but high school. Because of, and ain't, is that a big deal? It's, it, it can cost a lot. How do they move? There, there's several hundred thousand 
ants in a mature colony, they're really all female, except a few of the male alates, and there'll be two to four thousand male, uh, two to four thousand alates. Those are winged adults. A lot of people think, oh, they're termites, or what are the, you know, they can fly. They can fly several miles. They can fly several thousand feet up and mate. And it's that potential queen. She's just a pregnant female, but she's got to land to the ground. You know what? And they fly 10 miles away or more. And this, these flights happen. My next slide said April, May, June, right through there, but can happen any time of the year. Have you ever seen these flight mating flights? They'll mate. The male will eventually die. The female is attracted to the rooftops. A lot of times they die right there. Back of pickup trucks, they're spread down the highway. Fish ponds, swimming, who got swimming pools? The ants get in there and none of y'all got, okay. They're attracted, so a lot of them die. I don't know if it's 98, 99% of them die. But being as we're talking about 40, 50, 60 mounds per acre and 2,000 potential queens per mound, it's a good thing 98 or 9% of them die, right? But anyway, you know what You know what the number one thing that kills ants is? Uh, is another ant. So when they land, they're territorial. Boy, they'll fight. You see what I mean? So a lot of them die, which is good. But that one or so percent that make it just makes our population boom. You see what I mean? So we can get rid of all the ants in Russell County. That's not a problem. It's expensive, but it's not a problem. But what would keep them from flying back in? You follow me? Unless they were everyone in the whole country's gone, they're coming back. Does that make sense? So you can get rid of them in your yard, but they're coming back. And it's not just crawling from your neighbor's yard. You can't say, well, my neighbor tr don't treat, and I treat, and it's my neighbor that's causing the problem. It's within miles around you. Who's your neighbor? Huh? Y'all read your Bible. Who's your neighbor? Everybody. That's, that, that's where they're coming from is everybody and all. Well, I done said all that, so we're going to move on. We've got a lot to cover. There's a picture I took of it. Go ahead. Okay, so if you have a swimming pool and, like, I don't know, like, in the, those things that get in there that are flying that are biting you, that's fire ants? I, I don't know. You know, I used to think I could identify every weed, every bug, every just you just describe it to me, and I take a picture and send it to Jennifer. We'll look. I don't know. It might they, be. They just come and they're there for my daughter has them. They come for a little bit and then they're just gone. But man, when they're there, they bite you. And they fly into you. And they're, I, I don't know. Okay. A lot of bugs can do that, so okay. I'm not there. Awesome. You yeah. if. <laughs> Let's get it identified first okay. and all. But anyway, here's a picture I took of, my, but these are just, they call them alates, winged adults, half are male, half female. So they fly and mate and start new colonies. So you can see our numbers can grow greatly fast. You see what I mean? Um, there's the, the queen, and she's not a queen until she has young to tend to her. So when she lands, and she'll chew her wings off and bury in the ground, start laying eggs, a few will develop, a few will develop. A few, it, it takes time till she has enough tending to her, and then she becomes a queen then when you have servants, right? And then they build a mound. You follow me? So we're a month or six weeks into this before we see that visible mound. But yet, you can still, they still sting. I mean, those workers and all, they're there. They just haven't built a mound yet. And even the mound is just a small portion of the colony. People say, well, the drought killed the ants. Yeah. We don't, yeah. it, really? <laughs> and the, well, the rain causes ants. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, they're there even when it's dry. You just don't see that mound. You, you follow me? Let me move up now where the moisture is and everything. All right, so the queen can lay 800 eggs a day. The worker may live a month or so, kind of depends on the time. During the winter time, they can live much longer than a month. They're not really that active. And all but in the summertime, they'll live four or five weeks. But the queen can live seven years and all. So killing, if we don't kill the queen, she's laying 800 eggs a day. Are we accomplishing anything by killing the workers if we don't 
I mean, I don't like them, the workers. I'm not happy with the workers, but I've got to kill the, the queen. You see what I mean? All right. And it's only the females that can sting. The ovipositor, the part that lays eggs, is the part that stings. And that goes for wasps and bees and just a little, I won't charge you no more for that information. We done said, we done said that information, so I'm going to move on. This is an important thing. Y'all have heard of the, uh, we don't have to talk a lot about the home remedies. People say, I mention one, grits. You hear that a lot. I love grits. You eat the grits. The, the uh, ant doesn't eat solid food, and this is what's important. They don't eat solid food. So giving them the grit, if it's just one, it's a grit. If it's more than that, it's grit. Okay. Giving them that doesn't kill them. You think, well, they'll eat that and they'll swell up and right well first what did we say they're laying so many eggs a day you got to kill the queen not all the workers that doesn't matter but it doesn't work anyway why they don't eat solid food now this is gross but they'll go get food the workers bring you know the egg larva pupa adult that would go through the <laughs> complete metamorphosis or complete life cycle when they're at larva stage, a little, I'll call it a worm looking stage, but it's, it's the, the white things you see if you kick a mound open, those are the larva. When you see that larva stage, there's this fourth stage, they, they have different stages, the larva does, but that fourth stage of that larva can digest solid food. So an uh, ant has a plate in its mouth that prevents it from even eating solid food. They have to take the food, feed it to that fourth instar, we call it, that fourth stage of that larva. They swallow it, digest it, spit it back up into this little pouch, and then the other ants feed from that. That's nasty. <laughs> but if you killed any, who are you killing? The larva first. And they'll learn, so you're not killed the worker if you're killing instantly. So we got to kill them without know they're dying, right? We got to, it's a slow acting poison is what we're after. Now you can do contact stuff. We got a list of them that'll kill, but unless it gets to the queen, we got issues there. So a slow acting poison. And not only that, we're going to talk about that as we go on. We can do uh, insect growth regulators where it doesn't kill any ant, but it'll stop that queen's eggs from developing. You, you see how that's a big deal? So she, her eggs won't develop, so she's youth worthless from then on. So the workers, now they have to die of old age, which is how many weeks? Depends on the time of year, but in the summertime, four or five weeks. So it takes a few weeks to see some good results, but is that good? What's important about the insect growth regulators, we can use that in vegetable gardens and stuff that we can't use a lot of these other stomach poisons. You know. All right, so there's your, your pictures of the different egg larvae and pupa adult. The larva was the fourth stage. We ain't got time to talk about Let me tell you what the first thing it says, on, and I don't care what chemical you're reading, the first thing it says on this jug is it's a basically a violation of federal law to use this product in any way that is not recommended on that label. So you're breaking a federal law. I don't care what products you have at home, if you're not following label directions, you're breaking a federal law. You follow me? <laughs> Using gasoline, and th that's not recommended at all. I can tell you story after story, but I don't have time. Bad stories of <clears throat> things not going the right way, but that's wrong in the first place. You see what I mean? We're not supposed to use gasoline like that either, so don't do that. We gotta move on. Let's talk about the difference between baits and contact. Baits, what I like about a bait is, and I can use it just on around individual mounds, but I hate that way. You know why? I'm missing so many. The contacts, I don't like that as much either, because why? I'm missing so many. I'm treating individual mounds, and there's just so many there that haven't built a mound yet. You see what I mean? So by using a bait, over a large area, and that's what I want to spend a lot of time talking on today. And the bottom line is you'll take a bait, and we got, I got a list up here of the different baits. The bait is a ground up corn cob with soybean oil on it. That's the attractant. Remember that, soybean oil. 
with some kind of insecticide or growth regulator. So it's either a stomach poison or it stops the eggs from developing once the, the queen gets it. That's what's in there. All right, we want to spread that evenly over the whole yard. It'll be like a pound to a pound and a half per acre. This jug up here says a pound to two pounds per acre. So an acre is about the size of a football field. So when you buy a pound of it, you can just about do the size of a football field. That is by far the cheapest way to manage fire ants. You follow me? Now there's some other expensive ways, but that's the cheapest way. And you can put it in a spreader like this and walk around the yard. When would I want to do that? It, it depends on, it, there's a, a place I used to work in the county, they'd have this outdoor concert every August. Well, it's every September. So every August, a month before the concert, I treated. You see what I mean? If you're having a wedding outside, you see what I mean? If this was a daycare, if it's a nursery, I would treat more often. Before I had kids, I didn't treat much at all. But now, I don't have ants in my yard. I got kids. You see what I mean? So I would tell you this. I would treat in the spring and the fall. When I say spring, I mean roughly this time of year, but a warm day. If you can get out there and comfortable in a t-shirt, that's a good day to treat. If it's pretty cold or if it's real hot, that's not a good time to treat. Let me get back to what I said earlier. What did I say? It was a ground up corn cob with what on it? Soybean oil. That soybean oil goes bad. If you were to buy it and then come to this meeting and it's in your car, when you get home, throw it away and go back and buy more. That's where people mess up because they're putting bait out that's no good in the first place. You follow me? If you bought it last fall because they was running a sale, it's probably not good now. You see what I mean? The bait goes bad. If it doesn't smell good, they're not going to pick it up. So, how, how do we know if it's good or bad? You can take a teaspoon out and put it and just come back in a few, oh, 10 minutes and see if ants are picking it up. I always tell I got a slide to show when I say when's a good time to put it out, read the label, it'll tell you not before right after a rain, not before it don't disturb the mound, so don't do it after you cut grass. Although if y'all remind me later, I'll tell you a funny story on that. And uh, but it'll tell you it's temperature between 60 and 80 degrees. You see what I mean? But let me tell you something else that always works. I like stuff to work 100 percent of the time, and this will. Take you a teaspoon of sugar or greasy potato chips, or a peanut butter cracker, and put out here and there and there and there and there, and come back in 10 minutes. If they're just wrapped up with ants, that's a good time to put your bait out. That means they're actively foraging. <coughs> if there's no ants on that stuff, then let, don't put your bait out. You might, in an hour it may be different, and that's a good time to put it out. But at that point in time, that's not a good time. But I love to treat in the spring and again in the fall. But if I had kids, I mean daycares, there's, there's reasons for doing it more often. The, the, I can tell you the prices, but I mean you can buy it by the pound. A pound, of, a, sometimes two pounds cost about the same money as one pound. And you might treat your neighbors. Like when I buy enough, I don't need two pounds for my yard. But I'll go treat my dad's yard too. You see what I mean? You might work with your neighbors and work together like you treat this spring and they do it in the fall. I don't know. But does that make sense? All right. There's... Uh, How do you know what you're buying is good? You don't. Right. If there's dust all over it, I've been in stores, if, if that store is air conditioned and heated, it's probably good. If it's a store that gets a lot of business, it's probably good. If there's dust all over the packaging and things like that, or if it's so hot in the summertime that it's back in the back somewhere, it's probably not good. You see what I mean? The only way you will know if it is good is to get that teaspoon and see. Of course, obviously, they don't let you. you got to buy it before you can do that <laughs> and all. So I would say make sure you're getting it from a place that does a lot of business because if it's bad when you buy it, people say, oh, I tried it. That didn't work. It tells you on the, I mean, you, if you're not doing it at these times and all that, then it's not going to work. You follow me? Uh, Jennifer mentioned earlier, there's, there's something, you know, in Texas got uh, ants, and, and they do, they've got this method called the Texas two-step, and it's not a dance. It's first to use the bait, 
and then sometime after, three or four weeks later, come back and treat individual problem mounds with contact. Well, I got a list of contact stuff. We'll share that with you later. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff. It's just if you're treating 80 mounds to the acre with contact stuff, you're going to have a whole lot more time and money in it than if you use the bait first and then those four or five mounds. And I'll tell you this how it goes. If you treat twice a year, you'll go from 40, 50, 60 mounds per acre to about five mounds per acre. You see what I mean? Trop twice a year. Now, if you don't want those five mounds, we got to come back with contact stuff. You see what I mean? And if you just treat once a year, like that place I said we treat once a year is a big pasture. Treated once a year, a month before the concert, I'd go out there and count mounds. But then from that point on, when I'd go count, we'd have about 10 mounds per acre. But I was just treating once a year. You see what I mean? So you were always going to have them. But that, the two-step is come back with the contact stuff later. You see? All right. The, the man, the, here's the, the mound you see, but the colony is so much more than that. So when we just treat a mound, we're missing a lot. You follow me? That's why I like the baits, the broadcast bait, something that goes in a larger area. And they'll go get it. I mean, it's interesting. We'll say put out a pound, a pound and a half per acre. Depending on how many acres you want to treat, I love doing that. That's great. But let's just say you got 20 acres. Well, you need 20 pounds. Would you agree with that? If you were going to treat everything. And, I, and you can buy it in 25 pound bags. It's, it's not that you can't buy it. And it's cheaper to do that. But again, you can't store it. So when you buy it, you need to use that much. You follow me? So what if you, own, what if you had uh, five acres? It'd be nice to do five pounds. But I'll tell you something interesting. It's not like fertilizer where it's got to go everywhere. The ant will go get it. We can do, we can skip a, we can do a swath, a strip, skip a swath, do a swath. Does that make sense? The ants will go get it. And I'll tell you an interesting story. We're trying out different baits to see kind of what you y'all you talking about earlier. Which one is good? This is a big field. We do a strip and then we'd skip 100 feet on both sides and do another strip 20 foot wide. Skip 100 feet, do another strip, you got me? All right, we, we count mounds and all that. It was a dry year, we killed everything, even that 100 feet between. Why? It was a dry year, they were foraging. And the only year they don't forage as far, that, that might not work like that. So what did we learn about? I mean, all those baits worked good. And all. You see what I mean? So it's interesting, but read the label. How many of y'all read the label and follow the label directions? Because most people don't. A lot of people. All right. I'm so I said that wrong. Everybody does that. And all. So y'all know, but I'm telling about read because if you follow label directions, if it doesn't work, because we've been doing this a long time, I've never not known it to work if it was good bait and if you put it out at the right time and but it tells you on the label when to put it out getting back the do not disturb the mound and the, this part right here will tell you don't disturb the mound well this dr zing uh ping who we called her dr ping but dr who really if you um she did a study she's at auburn where she just disturbed every mound on the place put out the bait and it still killed the ants. So we've been saying all my career, you know, what, what, do what the label says, don't disturb the mound. Well, she intentionally disturbed for reason, and it still worked. You see what I mean? But again, she had good bait. If your bait is old, it, it is not good. You know, it goes bad quick. If I was to open the package today, it may or may not be good tomorrow. That's just how fast. We, we need to do something with it then on these baits. Now the contact stuff can last a long time. That's a different story. But on the bait, the stuff with the soil, it's kind of like if you bought butter. How long is it good if you left it in your car? Would y'all you, 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 left your milk in your car that you bought this? No. And treat it like, don't put it in your refrigerator, but does that make sense? Treat it like that. Is the disrupting of the mound that would knock back their foraging? Is that the... Disrupting the mound, yes, because they're going to rebuild that mound is the reason behind that. They're going to stop foraging and rebuild the mound. And when they stop foraging, that bait's only good for a few hours after you put it out. So if they don't get it right then, it goes bad laying on the ground. And that's why. But again, she did a study and it worked fine. But I just can't help but say don't disturb the mound <laughs> and all. Okay, Jennifer. And if I remember right, it seems like at some point in a training I went to, something about having the... Um, the bait next to like gasoline oh. in particular. Like yeah. Like it, so in my shed, what do I sit next to each other? Yeah. I have a shelf with my gas and my... Other pesticides and, yeah, and stuff like that and the smell. 
when I buy it, I don't even leave it under my carport. I bring it in the house with me. And then I use it the next day. I buy it when I need it. I'd love to buy it and use it the same day. But I am not going to let it get hot. And if I leave it outside, it's, it's probably not going to be good. Is there something you can use around the lake? Yes, there's something you can use around the lake. There's a bunch of stuff you can use around the lake. Um, like chickens and, and mm -hmm. I have, yeah, a lot of okay. livestock. There's products that I don't know where you cannot use it. It's labeled for everywhere. Yeah. You see what I mean? You got to look at the, of all your chemicals, and I'm not talking just, I'm talking about hairspray. I'm talking about deodorant, toothpaste. Y'all look at these stuff y'all use a lot of. You're cleaning supplies that you clean something with and then eat off of that. Look at the LD50 of that. A lot of our, all pesticides are poison. All poisons are dangerous. Don't misunderstand what I'm telling you. But so are these other things dangerous too that y'all don't probably are not worried about but should be. Look up the LD50s. That's the lethal dose that takes to kill 50% of a mammal population. They check it with rats and rabbits and all. The lower the number, the more toxic something is. The higher the number, the safer something is. Okay, a lot of these baits, the LD50, let me just tell you, the LD50, a table salt that we would sprinkle on our food need is 3,000. Anything over 500, caution's on the label, it's safe, but 3,000, that's caffeine's 4,500. I mean, you can get, all right, these baits is 20 to 30,000. So they're way higher. It's, you see what I mean? Your stomach, I don't know if it would hold enough. I mean, you'd have to eat a lot every day, I would guess, because your stomach wouldn't hold enough at one, any one point in time. Don't do that, though. I'm not saying that. <laughs> but 20 to 30,000 is, is several pounds. You see what I mean? It's expressed in milligrams per kilogram or parts per million. So, yeah, th there's a lot of stuff we can put around fish ponds. We can put around pastures. There's all stuff labeled for pastures and whatnot. So, yes, I, we're going to cover that later. And also, we can move on. Here's the bait take. We done had this talk, so we'll move on from there. Y'all can read all this. I done said that, so we're actually going to move on from there. That's what I like. And before I put this out, just so I could take that picture, and when I first put it out, well, two ants came or something other. You know, I had to wait as it warmed on up. And really, if I'd have waited a few more minutes, I could have got it. It would have been wrapped up. You see what I mean? That's what I'm looking for. It, and that would be a potato chip or a a little spoonful of sugar or something like that. When it gets wrapped up, they're foraging. You see what I mean? So if you did this and you had good bait, I'll say you'll never go wrong. But one or the other not happening. If they're not foraging and you got good bait or they're not for they are foraging and you, your bait's bad, it's not going to work. You see what I mean? So if both things are correct, we're good. And that sounds crazy, but that works. And here we go. I'm just, again, you, there's cheap things to put it out with. It's no big deal about these little box spreaders, you see. Now, they, a pound, a pound, and you can treat several acres with this. We used to treat a place I was at that we treated 80 acres. Well, it would take me two days to treat. This was something that was hooked onto a four wheeler. I got a picture of a, a herd cedar. We hooked it behind a four wheeler, treated 80 acres, we treated. But it'd take me two days, but it only took about five hours. Now, how come I didn't do all that in one day? Huh? I'm a government worker, and that's all we work anyway is two or three hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> right. This was August when I was treating. So this government worker worked all day at the extension office, and then at five in the afternoon, he went to this farm and worked on till dark but I didn't get done. The next day I went back at dark of uh, five, six o'clock. Then I had to wait for the temperature to get down and treated their other half that I missed. And you see what I mean? That I didn't get to and you got to do the same thing. Now this was August when I was treating. Normally I'd want to treat, you know, this time of year, March, April, you know, it just depends on how cool, like last week I wouldn't have treated. Too cold, but now that'd be good. But that April or so time frame I'm looking at, and again in October, that would be my two times. Last October was 100 degrees, it, or it was in the 90s anyway. <laughs> if I was treating last October, I'd have probably waited till mid to, to end of October before I even bought my stuff. You follow me? because it's going to be bad by the time you use it if you leave it outside. So it's not a particular day every year to do this. It just depends on what the conditions are like. Last October was hot, 
and all. So I'm waiting for it to cool off. So if I was treating in August and September, something like that, I want to do it in the cool time of day, late in the evening. If I'm treating this time of year, now would be a good time of day to treat. You follow me? You do it in the heat of the day. You, you see what I mean? But if you follow the little cookie rule or the cracker, the, you'll never go wrong if you do that. All right, so that's what all that says, and we can move on. Um, the two bait types mix, and, and something I didn't say when Jennifer mentioned what to go about where to put it. A lot of people want to put it in the fertilizer spreader and spread. Now that's going to taste, smell like fertilizer. So we don't recommend that. And I hate to say something and then tell you something else, but we did a study in Tallinn County where we had the fertilizer on the truck that we was going to go to the pasture with. And while we were loading it, we mixed in fire ant bait and went that fast, as quick as we could get from the farm supply to the field, we spread it and it worked. But generally speaking, if it sits there together, it, I don't recommend that, although I know it has worked in the past. But the longer it sits there, it smells like that fertilizer, and they're not going to take it up. So just remember that. Can you just rinse your equipment off? You'd rinse your equipment off, like you spread fertilizer. Now, this is the thing. I don't know what all y'all spread with these seeds and, and whatnot. We got a picture of a, a herd seeder, which it goes behind a full weeder. It's specifically designed for putting out fire ant bait. Now we can spread wildlife food plots and things like that too. You can put clover out with it, but it has an agitator in the bottom. See, this stuff is the ground up corn cob with soybean oil, it packs and it doesn't flow through a spreader easily. Would y'all agree with that? Yeah. It has a agitator in it that shakes and it'll make that bait fall through the little hole onto the spreader wheel and it is specifically designed really for putting out fire ant bait. And I, well, this guy who wanted, he, th that I used to put out over the 80 acres, he, he wanted to borrow it to put it out over the football field. And I said, well, you can, no problem. But I said, take your iron to hook that up. And when you get done, dust is all over. You got to clean all that up. I said, it, the football field's an acre. The time we do the sidelines, we're, we're into two acres. I said, in about 15 minutes, I can do it with a box spreader, and then you just save all kind of time with the other. But now you reach a certain point, and I would want that herd seeder. You follow me? So, and they got them to go behind the four wheeler and the side by side, or the three point hitch on a tractor. There's all kind of different ways of doing, but but you need several acres with that. You see, and Extension has these. I got another slide show. We got them all over the state. You can borrow it. It's no big deal. The the Extinguish Plus. I tell you, there was a product I like, S-Methoprim is the name of it, called Extinguish. I don't know of anywhere you cannot use Extinguish. Yes, beside the fish pond. Yes, to the pasture. Yeah, you see what I mean? Yes, to the school. Yes, to the vegetable garden. You could, used to, you could buy it by the pound. Two and a half pounds, five pound container. Now they only sell it in 25 pound bags. And I hate that, because that just knocks out every homeowner in the world, unless you're treating 25 acres or even 50 and do the skip a swath, it just not, it, it, it's just useless to us now. Now the blueberry farmer, the farmer buys it, don't misunderstand, but it just knocks y'all out. But you, was that not one I took a picture of the cat? It, it was Extinguished Plus. Oh, okay. All right, Extinguished Plus uh, has hydromethanol in it, has Amdro in it, and you can find Amdro everywhere. You see what I mean? Well, Amdro's not labeled for vegetable gardens. It's not labeled for, you see what I mean? Amdro is not labeled for pasture, but Amdro Pro is. If you don't go by the label, you got to read the label to see where you can spread it. And it is confusing. And I got something I'll pull up later that shows what's for vegetable gardens and what's for baits anyway. I did baits. I didn't write down every contact stuff but for the baits. But anyway, that's Extinguished Plus. Again, it's one of my favorite ones. Has Amber. Now, we're no longer labeled for vegetables. When we have the Plus, you think, oh, and that's what, to me, is why the product suffers. Oh, when it says Plus, it must be better. <laughs> what it is, I, I like the Amdro in there with it because you got a stomach poison with a, a growth regulator together. I love that. But now I can't use it in vegetable gardens. Well, everybody, when you have these two things on the shelf, what you gonna buy? Something is the same price. You're gonna buy something with plus. But and I think that the name is what killed them on the product. They, they I called the company, and they're not gonna put it back out. And on, it's depressing. But anyway, 
you want to look at this, Extinguished Plus is good, but it's not labeled for fruit and vegetable. So if you had a big old five or 10 or whatever acre of strawberry or pick your own blueberry or muscadine, whatever, we can't go in there, you'd, you'd have to buy the product labeled for that area. But let's just say you're the homeowner that's got five blueberry plants, right? I mean, in your yard, what can we do? The little garden that's the size of this room. Or say your garden was an acre in size. What could we do there? Well, one is we could buy the product labeled for that, but you're going to buy more than you need because, again, you got back got to buy by the 25-pound bag. Or you could go around the vegetable garden and just remember how the ants would go get it. And You could go around the vegetable garden or around the orchard, just not in the orchard. You see what I mean? And that's what I suggest doing. You know, any questions about that? Uh, sir, sir, if you could, like, move a little bit. Yeah, like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Get back up. Thank you. <laughs> it, it, it pretty, it pretty much, uh, though, is only good for a certain amount of time anyway, right? And so, so once it's gone through its cycle, it should be safe for your vegetables and stuff afterwards. No. I agree with you 100%. Sounds yes, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. If the label, the site has to be on the label. Yeah. If the label says vegetables, and you think, well, this is August and or September, and my vegetables are gone. I'm not going to plant again till next year. Yeah. Nor would I eat anything. You think, well, I could. It's still illegal. Okay. It's still wrong. Whatever. You, you see what I mean? Right. It, it don't make well no it's, it's gone. <laughs> I mean it's really not. I mean it, it goes away quick, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. If the label says don't do it, then you don't. The site has to be on the label. Okay. So if you're treating your home loan, home loans has to be on the label. If you're treating vegetable garden, vegetable garden has to be on the label. You see what I mean? Okay. And it doesn't matter why. It doesn't matter how fast it breaks down. None of that matters. It, whatever the label says is what you've got to do. But if 25 pounds is extinguished, you can use any place quick. <laughs> if it's new. It, it's, it's labeled for a lot of places. All right, we can move on. Quick question, just to make sure that I have it right. The one that says extinguished, that's sold in 25-pound bags, you're saying will work, but don't use the plus. Is that, is that Extinguish right? is labeled for vegetables. But there's other things okay. labeled for vegetables, too, now, oh, okay. besides that. And I got a list, but... Oh, you do? All okay. of them come in 25, all of them come in big packages is the thing because their market is yeah. that commercial farmer and all. And Extinguish was the only one that I knew of that put it in pound containers and they did for 10 years. And I think when they first started making that Extinguish Plus, I thought, man, this is great. I ought to be slapped for thinking that because that was the downfall of Extinguish yeah. then because everybody bought the other. And, and then the people that have the farm supply stores where I come from, they didn't realize that this was labeled for here but not for there. And the homeowner would think, plus, it must be better. Well, in a way, it's better. But in a way, it, it'll, it'll also extinguish negative <laughs> instead of plus. I mean, it, it's worse, you see. It just depends on your location. Where can we buy it around here? Like... That's let's cover that okay. last okay. and all that. You know, there's the herb cedar that goes behind. But it, it again, we have these all. You can buy one. I mean, it's no big deal. They're five or six hundred dollars, and they're great. They have it. We had one, but I gave it back to Auburn. Okay, there's several. If, well, there's several. You can get it. Though. I mean, if if you're treating many acres, you need to borrow that and use it. I loan out. We got one at my office. I loan them out a lot. But a guy, I was. Where I come from, I'm not too far from Talladega. And you're at the Talladega, there's the deaf school and the blind school and all. Just think of being blind and getting in fire ants and everything. Well, they treat the whole, sometimes several hundred acres, you know, of that campus and all around. He was borrowing my spreader. And well, they just bought one, you know. They, 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 I mean, they needed to. I mean, they, if you're going to use it a lot, you're gonna, because you may want it and somebody else is used, you know what I mean? So it... If you'll use it a lot, you probably just buy one. But these handheld are just, they're cheap. And for the most part, I mean, if you're treating several acres of a pasture, then you need the herd cedar. And, and again, this, this farm I was on that was doing this concert and I'd treat, I left that county and went to another county. 
And that mayor called and he said, hey, we need to treat. I said, well, I can't treat this year. I mean, I was tied up. I said, you need to do, I said, you need to go get that cedar from this county. I didn't have one at the time and he had to go to Talladega County and get it. And we were in Cleburne County at the time, but anyway, he went and got it and he used it. But the next year he said, well, I'm just going to use mine that I already have that I just put deer food plots out with. He's driving through there and banging on the back of that thing. Nothing's falling out. What should have went over many acres went over 20, about 10 or 15, 20 acres. And it should have went over a hundred, over a hundred. You see what I mean? It wouldn't put it out even again. He could have bought him a cedar for not too much than what he wasted. In other words, like I've got a, a spreader on the back of my track. I can put it on the back of my right. tractor. It won't work in there? No, it won't work. Okay. Again, it just it clumps up because of that oil in that corn cob, you know, what I mean, ground up. It's just going to pack and all it's not going to flow through. So you're wasting a lot of time. And even, even these cedars, I don't like filling it plumb full, you know. I, you want to fill it half full and you're continuously shaking it, you know, as you, because I'm telling you, it, it'll pack on you the, the heavier that is and all. All right, we can go on to another one. This just shows, I don't even know if that's updated, but that just shows different counties that have it. When we put this bait out, you put a pound to a pound and a half per acre. Well, when you do the math, we, I mean, if you're spreading fertilizer, there's all kind of different ways you want to do. But bottom line, I took this picture. This is correct. Per square foot, you want 10 or so, 10 to 12 little flakes. You see, if you can see it being slung out, obviously you, you can see some being, you're probably putting way too much. You follow me? Obviously something's gotta go out, but you're putting way too much, and most people put way too much and all. You see? This is something interesting, and, uh, and, all, and there's this, these things, again, they came from Argentina where we didn't have any natural enemies of this thing. So went to Argentina and found these forward flies. Now we have forward flies here. They just, the, the native forward flies to here don't attack the imported ant. Went to Argentina and got some forward flies and they've been released all over the state. They're in Russell County. They're in all over the Southeast. They've been released since 19, I don't know, 97 is when they were first released in Alabama. And all but Georgia's released a bunch too. But anyway, they're everywhere. It's kind of interesting. This fard fly lays an egg, and boy, it is fast on the thorax of an ant. It'll develop and crawl up into that little larva, the head of the ant. Eventually, the head of the ant falls off, and it'll pupa. That's one coming out right there of a, of a fire ant's head. Ain't that neat? You, know, you think, that's mean, but I mean, if y'all y'all must love ants more than I do. If well... Is there an enemy of the foreign fly or is it okay? Is it going to become the next pest? <laughs> yeah, that's, that, this is the thing. I, a friend of mine doing this, Fudd Graham, he does a lot of fire research at Auburn. Uh, Dr. Graham was at a school something, doing a little fire ant booth talk, whatever. This lady come by, she said, what are those? He had his fire ants there in a tub, you know, what is that? Now, who don't know what fire ants are, you know? <laughs> this lady was from Argentina, <laughs> where the fire ants came from, and she didn't know what fire ants were. Now, how can you not know what they are when you, you see what I mean? Especially when they bite you. Yeah. They, they left there and came here, so. Okay. <laughs> in, in Argentina, they have about less than 10 mounds per acre. Well, we've got 50, 60, 70. In Argentina, they got about 20 different species of forage flies. Here we've got, it depends on what county you're in, some counties two, some counties one forage fly, some counties three or four. We're trying to get these opened up, but she didn't know and they've been living with them. All. How about the forage flies that are native already? Y'all got problems with those? They're already here, you see what I mean? They do all that research. And, <coughs> If that's not a fard fly. That's, these things are the smaller than a fire ant's head. So you got to remember they're pretty tiny. 
these particular flies. All right, and they're smaller than a gnat. You got to realize, and I'll go collect these things. I can collect hundreds in a little while. In Argentina, they said, man, it'll take you all day to collect 20 or 30 because they just don't have as many ants as we have. Anyway, again, no natural enemies. All right, so we've been doing this over 20 years. What did we find out? Do we got fewer mounds, less mounds? You know, haven't seen a reduction in fire ants whatsoever. It's cost a lot of money to do the research, so they're quitting that program and everything. And, and again, because a lot of the species try to introduce more and we just can't get them to, to live and all, so it's kind of tough, so it really don't even matter anymore. But forward flies are there, and they're neat. You can Google on YouTube, forward flies on fire ants, you can see them lay eggs. They got videos and all, it's real neat. But you can go on, and that really doesn't matter. That's the ant. That, this is just that's the tricuspid. That's a cravatus. But there's a bunch of different ones, and that don't matter. They're ovipositor is what we see. But y'all see how big it is compared to the size of an ant. And all those suckers are tiny. But it has nothing to do with house flies or those other things that have problems with. I just thought they'd be interested, and we don't even have to read all that. But uh, I said all that when we talked. So let's move on to another one. And let's stop right here and look at these papers that I'll hand out. Oh, right, just Dr. Kathy Flanders, who used to work at Auburn, she retired. I may not have quite enough, so if y'all are a couple, just take actually take one and pass it if you can. I can make some if we need some. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Dr. Flanders would go to a bunch of different places in Alabama, different retail, farm supply stores, places that sold fire ant materials. You see what I mean? To homeowners. She'd make a list of what they had. She would look at the price. You see what I mean? She'd actually keep up with how many stores she found that product in. And that's what this paper is. Whether it be a bait, whether it be the contact stuff, so you can take that with you. Now, she retired, so that says 2017. We don't have an 18 one, you know, and it, this would be the time of year we'd make a 19 one. But she retired beginning last year, so again, we don't have a, but a lot of that stuff is still sold today, but it'll tell you which one's a bait and different things. What's interesting on there, it talks about prices, because that has a lot to do with it. If I said this was the best or that was the best or this is good, you, the next question is, well, how much does that cost or what? And there's some baits. Uh, Andro, fire ant bait uh, per acre, $18 an acre, but that varies. Again, <laughs> it'll be basically $15 a pound or so, and, or I've seen it for $13 a pound, but at $13 a pound at a pound and a half per acre, that's where they get 18 or what you kind of, it's just averages now we're looking at. So if you, this this says a pound to two pounds per acre. Well, if you put two pounds, I mean, you're going to be over 23 or four or $5 an acre. You see what I mean? So if you did the swath, skip a strip and we can bring that down to $13 an acre. You see what I mean? So when you read these numbers, just have that in mind as you're looking because it's just averages and people do different ways. I have seen a pound of Amdro cost the same money as two pounds of Amdro. <laughs> well, if you only needed a pound, I guess buy the pound because it's not going to be good when you want to use it later. But y'all follow me there? If I could get two pounds for the... $15 or 14 you know, well, that makes this number be cut in half, you see what I mean. So just think about that as you're reading. Extinguish Plus, uh, that's s methapremin and hydromethanon. The, we had a picture of that up. Extinguish Plus, and, and Jennifer found it at the farm supply store today, you know, it's on shelf, is uh, $22 an acre. That's one of my favorite things, $22 an acre, okay? Look on down, Amdro Kills, Fire Ant and Yard Treatment Bait. Well, by golly, it's a uh, S-methapreme and hydromethanon too. Same stuff, so which one would you buy? Well, one's $22 an acre, the other one's $130 an acre. You see what I mean? If you're treating the area the size of this room, it might not matter, but you, you might want to look at some other things. And as you look through this publication, those are the baits on the front. The, the back, the other sheets, or you can find the contact stuff, and you'll just have to read to see what's labeled for uh, vegetable gardens and stuff. Let me, uh, yeah, about all right, I'm finna be done. I'm finna put one thing up there. I can.
could email this to Jennifer, but here's Bates label for fruit and vegetables. Extinguished professional fire at bait. Again, it's the only in 25 pound sack. Furlong, come and get it. Now, the homeowners can buy that one, but esteem, you, you gotta buy a big bag of it. But you gotta read like clinch, and y'all can look at some of these. This is only for non-bearing fruit, or it's only for grapes, or it's, you see what I mean? It, the extinguishing fruit, they're kind of for any fruit or vegetable. You see what I mean? Now, I don't, I don't care which one you buy, just make sure whichever one you buy, your site is on the label, you see? And I put some contact stuff for fruit and vegetable. And this is just, and contact means that's the two step. Like first do the bait, and then secondly come in with the contact. Like you can do the bait around your vegetable garden, do the andro, but not in the vegetable. See, andro's not on my list. Don't go in the vegetable garden with it. But andro's just something you can find anywhere. But if I could buy the Extinguish Plus, I'd get it, but still don't go in the garden. Go, you can put it in vegetable garden, but go around your, I, I said, you can put it in your ornamental garden, but not the vegetable garden. Go around it, and then go inside the garden with contact stuff. And again, the contact, you're missing more mounds than you're hitting. So I don't like that, but that's the second step. First step is the bait. Second step is the contact. So here's some, uh, and some of the, spinosad is an organic product. You know, I don't know if y'all use that or not, but. Uh, organic Materials Review Institute is what OMRI stands for, and these are labeled for organic farms can use this. And then there's a seven product, there's a bifenthrin product, these are not organic, but they are labeled for contacts in vegetables. You see what I mean? And I've got some baits labeled for pastures. Uh, you know, uh, Amdro Pro Professional Fire Ant Bait. If you don't say Amdro Pro, if it just says Amdro Fire Ant Bait, then that's not labeled for pasture. You see what I mean? All right, well, I'll hush and I'll just answer questions now because our time is. Show them the ones that are at our location. Okay. Jennifer went out and, and she went to the store and took pictures. Well, I would suggest to take that orange paper with you to the store and see what they've got. Compare prices. Again, it don't matter what something costs per bag. Think about what it costs you per acre. You see what I mean? But this is what Jennifer found. She found the. Uh, Am Extinguish Plus. She'll find the Amdro. You, you see what I mean? It's, those are common to find. 